I have been playing multiplayer shooters for close to 30 years, but recently it feels like the two major shooters in my life have dropped the ball. In this video we'll talk about why I prefer X Defiant over Fortnite or COD right now and what it would take for X Defiant to become a serious contender as the best free to play shooter around. Because it's good, it has potential, but it's definitely flawed. Escort! Who's ready to muck about with the transportation of goods? Before we dive into X Defiant specifically, we need to zoom out a bit. When I say that Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare releasing in 2007 was a big deal, I'm not exaggerating at all. Console multiplayer was taking off and the Xbox 360 was where it was all happening. Halo 3, Gears of War, Battlefield Bad Company 2 and yes, Call of Duty. During the mid 2010s I missed a lot of the games because of traveling for work. But the reboot of Modern Warfare was when I got back in. However, it didn't take many entries for the quality to start dipping. Yeah, sure, we got some of my favorites, such as the huge open zombie map in Call of Duty Cold War, and the excellent DMC mode that had huge potential, but was basically treated like an unwanted stepchild. But we also got Call of Duty Vanguard, and the more than half-assed Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, complete with old maps, the worst campaign in the game's history, and uh, some questionable additions to the game's cast of characters. I find it a bit off-putting that in the reveal trailer for Modern Warfare 3, the developers show nighttime military firefights and infiltration, but when you get into the game you will frequently run into demon ladies and Santa Claus. I'm not even sure that Activision has fully decided what kind of game they want Call of Duty to be, because right now it's trying to be everything for everyone, and in turn it ends up being nothing for no one. Now during this period, Fortnite had released the Zero Build mode, which appealed quite heavily to me and my friends. But this season we got a huge emphasis on car combat that feels extremely overpowered and misbalanced. Don't get me wrong, I like my cars in Fortnite. I always have fun whenever I play rocket racing, but please just keep emphasis on cars in their own mode or hey, make a battle royale mode with combat cars. But at least give me a choice to not engage with something that so drastically changes the flow of the game. So at this point I was stuck between a military shooter with an identity crisis and a classic battle royale that had lost focus on what makes it special. Well lucky for me, more than 6 months after their closed beta, a viable alternative finally arrived. In May this year after lots of delays, Ubisoft finally officially released X Defiant. In a time where everyone and their grandmother is doing either a battle royale or an extraction shooter, X Defiant is a 6v6 arena shooter with emphasis on modes like domination, escort and zone control. Rather than focusing on hero characters like Overwatch, the game has factions, each with their own two freely selectable skills as well as an ultra. To be honest, they don't really feel like characters as much as just an avatar for the player and that's okay, because the gameplay is solid, very familiar, just a mishmash of many popular free to play games, but done in a combination that still gives it its own identity. And when I say familiar, I'm really not kidding. The game's executive producers Mark Rubin, who produced several Call of Duty titles, most notably the very first Modern Warfare. You may not recognize his name, but you have definitely seen him before. His influence on the gameplay is immediately noticeable. The shooting itself is very tight and snappy, and definitely gives off vibes of the more arcadey Call of Duty multiplayer. As mentioned earlier, these guys and gals have powers, or skills, 
And these are very important to how the game is played. For example, the phantoms have an emphasis on shielding and a bit more health, whereas the cleaners are more aggressive with incendiary rounds and fire-based powers. Something I really appreciate with X Defiant are the several objective-based modes. Sure, there is a team deathmatch mode, and yes, you'll run into the occasional person who comes just for the kills, but when playing objectives, the powers just really adds an extra layer of tactics where you can be useful without necessarily being the best player on your team. The progression and customization system is simple but satisfying and manageable. But in Call of Duty, for example, most weapons have plus 20 attachments per slot. To me, this is crazy and overcomplicated. It would be like wanting to buy a banana, but going to Disney World to get it. X Defy does away with all that. You can see all attachments per slot on any given weapon, all at once, and every attachment feels justified in its existence. You know why it's there. So no, you will not be picking between 17 different red dot sites. Instead, you can spend your time actually playing the game. Aside from that, yes, there is a battle pass as the game is free to play, but those are all cosmetics and all factions, present and future, can be unlocked through gameplay alone. And that is actually kind of great. Every season there will be a cool new faction to work towards, and for now they promise the new map every single month. X Defiant just ticks a lot of the good boxes here and it's refreshing, to be honest. Ubisoft has gotten a lot of flack the last five years, but there is one thing you have to give them. They really support their live service games if there is an audience for it. For Honor, The Division 2 and Rainbow Six Siege are all games that came out more than five years ago, and all three of them are going strong. Ubisoft hasn't officially announced player count, but several sites are reporting good numbers. As the game is free to play, and as Ubisoft adds more content, I could definitely see this being a game where people either have this as their main online game, or something they pop in to check out once in a while. That being said, the game definitely launched with some kinks, and some of the design choices are questionable. I have played X Defiant for more than 50 hours at this point, and I'll say that most of the launch issues with connecting to games or hit detection is fixed. I will have the occasional skill bug out on me, but with 7 patches as well as one seasonal update in a very short lifespan, those should be fixed soon. Other issues I see with the game is the same as I see over on Call of Duty. In objective modes, such as Occupy, you just get greater XP from focusing on kills over playing the objective. This is a tough one to crack as the issue feels as old as time, but I would love to see what the team can come up with to at least balance out this issue. Other than that, I also have a gripe with the game's voiceovers. Not the characters themselves, but the narrator voice for every faction. Escort! Who's ready to muck about with a transportation of goods? The goons are escorting a package to the delivery zone. Shoot at them so they can't do that. We missed the start of this. Just go stop that package while you were here the whole time. At this point, I'm pretty much used to them, but they just really aren't that great, and I tend to just turn down dialogue volume as their yapping will sometimes be a bit too much and make it hard to hear footsteps nearby. But those are minor gripes and what is a mechanically strong shooter. The gunplay is familiar to anyone who has ever played a Call of Duty. The skills take some getting used to, but they're definitely less overwhelming than Call of Duty's system with perks, perk packages, Kill streaks and a gajillion attachments. And the game is free to play, meaning that for my friends who plays games with me every once in a while, it's easy to convince them to join me for a round or two. So with that being said, X Defined is just a full circle moment for me. My favorite shooters are not on top of their game, and X Defined just swooped in at the perfect time. At this point, I'm genuinely curious what you guys think. Have you given it a shot, and did you like it? Will you be playing it going forward? I would love to know the temperature in the room. For me, I'll be sticking around for a while. But there is this other shooter that I love as well that, to some extent, I think is the best shooter right now. It's not free to play, it released kind of broken, but they fixed it. And now it's genuinely great. Maybe I should pop back in there for a few rounds.